Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Karen Mayo from Capita, and I'd like to warmly welcome you today to our webinar, which is part of a series of Capita Integra Centros webinars that we've been running since we launched our next generation version of Integra ERP, which is our finance and procurement solution, um, of which we have over 200 plus organizations within the UK and Ireland using um, for over 30 years. Next slide, please. So, um, I just, just for hygiene, um, would you please ensure that your telephone is on mute uh, once you join the webinar? Uh, we will hold a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation, um, and you can submit your question through that presentation by, throughout the presentation, by clicking on the question mark in the box, and, and, and then opening uh, on the right-hand corner and opening the Q&A box. Um, we'll respond to the questions um, in the Q&A session at the end, and anything that we can't address at the session, um, I'll follow up with you directly. Um, so it would be useful if you could include your email address, please, in, in case that, that happens. So just a little bit, um, just to put some faces to names. Um, I'm Karen Mayo. I'm the Account Director at Capita, um, and I'm responsible for working with clients to support them in their back office transformation modernization programs um, by Integra. Um, Centros. I'm joined by my colleague Jeremy Phillips from Cloud Trade, who is our partner manager and uh, who is an e invoicing and AP automation e expert. Welcome, Jeremy, and Melanie Charles from our marketing team, who will who, have, uh, who will support us on, on the webinar and and on the polls that we're going to do um, in the session. So, in terms of what our agenda today will cover. We're probably going to spend about 40 minutes and then break out to Q&A. Um, we're going to do an introduction to Capita and the Cloud Trade Partnership, um, a, a little bit about our understanding and insight into the digital agenda across the UK and Ireland, um, why our partnership, um, why we have our partnership, and a little bit about our fully automated account payable e-invoicing uh, e solution, how the service works, and the benefits of our holistic solution. In terms of foundations for our webinar, um, we want to um, very much bring it across to you that we're committed to support clients in the market to successfully address the challenges and change that is in today's environment, predominantly around market and government drivers, delivering more for less, in terms of cash savings for front office or giving in a, um, a, a route to uh, invest funds elsewhere in terms of growth, digital strategy, and I, um, elements such as data transparency and automation of reporting. And key on that is that the more data that is um, valid and uh, a single version of the truth, um, having access to that data informs decision making and further drives transformation and change as a continual process and moving on that journey. So, in terms of, um, and just to kind of consolidate that foundation, uh, our webinar also considers the results from our fi uh, finance futures report that we published last month. Um, we carried out a survey with uh, SBs. CTOs and FCOs in, uh, in summer 19, and interestingly, our, the, the points I've raised previously in the, at the foundation points strongly correlate and resonate with the report findings. The C-level top priority is organizational change, and that is focusing on, and the key focus is on investment across technology, people, and processes to enable that progress and change, and it's primarily driven by standardization and automation to affect those positive outcomes. So before we kind of um, move further in, I'd just like to take a quick um, a quick um, stance here and ask you a poll question. So I'd like to ask, what level of automation do you currently have? Is it fully manual, manual and OCR, OCR and e-invoicing, e-invoicing only, or outsourced? So I'll just open the poll. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. So, um, Melanie will um, just inform us what that poll result is, please. All right, thank you very much for um, participating in that poll. Our result for this question is that we have the strongest majority is in e-invoicing only. Okay, thank you for that. that, that that's um, useful to know and, uh, and it shows that we're, uh, our presentation and webinar is, is, is fully aligned. Thank you for that. So, um, just moving on to um, back to the agenda. So, I want to talk a little bit about our partnership. We recognise um, as, as two organisations that we have synergies in our expertise and solution around the kind of full um, procurement, P2P and AP, um, AP roadmap to support our clients. So we combined our unique insight and best practice to provide a, a solution, um, an end-to-end -end procurement P2P e-invoicing solution that is delivered via our Integra Centros and, and, and Cloud Trade um, e-invoicing service. And it's based on our experience and leadership in the market. And we've delivered, um, we have developed a best in class solution which we're delivering to our clients. And, and that's based on the significant experience, combined experience that we have working in UK and industries, UK and Ireland and industries. So, in terms of the digital agenda, I'd like to focus on three key areas that kind of came across from our um, finance futures um, um, feedback. And one is around e invoicing and procurement transparency and compliance, and the third one around driving efficiencies. And we'll look at these a little bit more um, on the next slide. So um, often our clients ask, well, where do I start? It, we can help. We understand the requirements for digital financial management. We've been, we've been delivering financial management solutions for, um, for 30 years plus, and we understand some of the, the um, legislation and regulatory things that are required in the market. We're already supporting clients on their journey to meet the EU directive for next year. We've already got some clients that have met this this year. Um, we fully recognise the potential for public sector to achieve two billion pounds annual savings. Working with um, via our engagements with clients, we, we already recognise potential ROIs of anything between tens of k to millions um, for individual clients. So procurement and automation is a key area for targeting these efficiencies and cash savings. So, next slide, please, Mel. Oh, thank you. So, actually, just to cover off, um, fair point. Um, the, the tick boxes that we have here in the slide are just our areas of where those efficiencies um, and benefits are visible, both from a qualitative and a quantitative perspective, to try and improve visibility, improve efficiency and productivity, to try and improve cash management, uh, streamline processes, etc. Thanks, Mel. So um, we also get asked from a transparency and compliance perspective, how can I be both compliant and transparent? Increasingly, government bodies are seeking transparency and compliance. For example, HMRC um, requests that archive data include not just the data, but the images associated with it, so it's around the records management piece. And our, our solution is designed to support this. It's completely auditable with data workflow. It, 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 um, it digitally records um, records Uh, interactions with third party and workflow. It accesses data in real time so we can do real time reporting. It automates um, workflows and it delivers um, secure and efficient data management. So, um, looking at the third point around driving efficiencies, you know, we, we often get asked by clients how can I drive that efficiency and strip away manual processes? How do I empower my organization to evolve and grow? Well, we do that by providing a solution that has assurance of affordability. And, being able, and also being, so, um, and being able to provide data that 
have um, that accuracy and assurance and single version of the truth. So being able to drill down those, those um, dashboard reports down to the, the, the source data. So on having reducing that manual process depending where you are in that journey, whether you are, are using manual processing at the moment or e-invoicing. Um, it's around um, automated workflows and aligning and having the visibility of that within procurement. Procurement is a function that cross cuts across a full organization. So there is um, there are dependencies and, and visibility across the business. So what does that mean in terms of ROI for marketing, um, um, in terms of ROI for e-invoicing? And I've just, just got some examples here of empirical and benchmarking data. Um, the Hackett Group, um, by the research, estimate that businesses are spending at least two to four pounds per invoice and that it reduces employee productivity by 50%. There are some studies by local government bodies that actually say invoices are in the region of 13 to 14 pounds. And they have actually done further studies to segment that, that process to show that there are, er there are stages of that process, um, of, of, the e of the invoicing process that, that are much more costly than others. The Lentis have, um, via their research, suggest that costs can be reduced by 68 to 80% um, moving away from a paper-based invoicing solution to, uh, to an electronic digital solution or e-invoicing. And that, that is significant efficiency and cost saving. And we're probably more, more um, aware of uh, streamlined procurement pay process because that is more of a mature process. Um, and Within a two-year period, organizations typically um, see a 60% efficiency saving across procurement, electronic requisitions, approvals, et cetera. So um, I'd like now to pass you to Jeremy, who will walk through in more detail the, um, the, um, the e-invoicing solution and, the, and, the, and its place in the market and its benefits. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Karen. I think in terms of the, the next 15 or 20 minutes or so, I'm just going to take you through a little bit about the current landscape as to some of the channels and the routes in for documents. It's interesting seeing the poll questions. Uh, obviously, there's a combination of people doing e-invoicing, uh, some manual processing, and some people using OCR as well. So we'll touch on some of the benefits of each of those, maybe some of the limitations of each of those. We'll look at some case studies, and we'll look at how each of the, the various channels could work and, and sort of potentially complement each other to work within the business. Now, in terms of the, the market that's out there at the moment, there's typically two main ways that people will bring data in, ingest the documents, if you like. One is through data automation, and one is through data capture. Most people will be familiar with EDI, or electronic data interfacing. And this is typically suited to organizations that provide large volumes of invoices or transactions that you upload directly into maybe a finance system, ERP system, and so on. There's many advantages to that. It, it's a lower cost of transaction. Uh, it's seamless integration once it's established, and it's very quick to process. Unfortunately, there are some uh, cost implications and technical implications that require both the sender and the recipient of a document to agree to. So, Sometimes it can introduce barriers for lower volume senders. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about e-invoicing, but e-invoicing has been growing in popularity over the last 10, 15 years. And I think that's largely driven through uh, EU directives, through PEPOL, uh, and obviously through the, advance, uh, the advancements that it can bring to, uh, well, operationally and financially within a, an AP team. When we look at, at data capture, it's much more about um, the, the process is streamlined to some extent with uh, captured data usually then being passed to an AP team or to an operator to either complete or potentially correct as well. And that uh, is, is fairly true for OCR, uh, which again, success rates are growing, but people typically will see up to about 80% success rates on OCR. Other methods of capture include electronic portals where you would ask a sender to type in their invoice to then be um, taken directly into a, an ERP or to a finance system. Again, there's been some pushback on that in the past where 
uh, the largest senders have been reluctant to re-key data. And certainly when it comes to, you know, which is the legal document, is it the one that existed in the ERP system or is it in the, uh, the portal? Again, there's been some questions raised about that. Outsourcing has, uh, has been a popular choice and continues to be so. Um, obviously, this uh, provides a, an instant win, if you like, in terms of outsourcing a function. Uh, that might be to a, a local shared service. It could be um, offshoring or nearshoring. And again, different people have different views on that. But holistically, these are typically the routes in that people would take. And I think what we are very conscious of within, within, within Capture and Cloud Trade is that one, one particular route in on its own isn't necessarily the right thing. And what we typically see is that there will be multiple routes in. So what we'll find is, is that for very large senders, there'll be electronic invoicing. So this might account for maybe sort of 5 to 20% of the volumes. And it, it differs by sector as well. This will have a number of different routes in. So as I say, it could be coming in by EDI or uh, PEPL, for those of you familiar with the PEPL directives. Um, and historically below that, people have looked to the data capture techniques, the likes of the OCR, the electronic portals, and the outsourcing to do the remainder of the documents. What we are seeing a shift to, if you like, in the most successful model is still using EDI for the top uh, senders, so those very large uh, providers, um, using something like an OCR type solution for what we call the tail end. So this is for the, the low volume suppliers, maybe just sending in a handful of invoices a year. And then in terms of what we call the massive middle here, this is where it's probably most suited to e-invoicing. So this is where if we can reduce the barriers to success uh, by removing areas like um, you know, supplier adoption, uh, no technical intervention required, uh, and it being able to streamline that process. And this is the area that typically is attracting the, the biggest benefits at the moment. So just moving on to what makes us different within that, that cycle there. So if we look now uh, very specifically at e-invoicing, there are uh, two key reasons why we think we've had a lot of success in the market. The solution that we've um, uh, got patented technology around both extracts and validates data with 100% accuracy. So that 100% that accuracy claim is true for both header and header and line details. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the case studies where this is used, but because we're only de dealing with digital data, we cannot misread a, a 1 for an L or an I, for example. The other key thing is that this is a rapid to deploy data automation solution. So again, by removing a lot of the barriers um, and being able to deliver a project around e-invoicing, typically in under 12 weeks, we can look to provide some very quick wins, both operationally and financially as well. So Cloud Trade is a little bit different, and in terms of the process as to how that works, the, the first barrier um, that people will typically overcome is actually dealing with the supply chain. It's about working with your supply community to ask them provide you a document in a format that's easy for them to send, but enables you to automate the digital capture process. There are two key ways that this happens, and that by, by far the most popular choice is where a supplier will simply email a PDF invoice in. So there's no process change for them, there's no uh, change in uh, technical outputs or operations for, for them, but what we'll do is we will pick up the, the PDF invoice in this case, and then we will go through and using your very specific set of business rules, we will extract the data. Uh, we can interpret the data as well. So if there's something that's coming in um, in a particular format that you need to be re-represented for your finance system, we can do all of that. We can validate the data as well. So for example, if there is um, line level detail that we're extracting, we can do individual line checks with VAT. Uh, we can then check that to the total document value. We can enrich the documents as well. So if there is data that you hold in a third party system, maybe a finance ledger, that we need to go through and say, well, we're going to do a purchase order lookup to make sure that the purchase order number is valid for this particular supplier. We can make sure that there's a balance on it that's, that's open. Um, and then we can go through and pass extra information back onto the invoices supporting data. And eventually that information is then exported out, uh, typically as XML and PDF. And as Karen said, you know, there's a legal requirement for you to be able to uh, review that document within your ERP system. So we'll provide uh, a PDF format as well as the XML. 
that would get uploaded directly into Integra, and then it is made then available for the rest of the process. There's a number of um, steps along the way that can be added in terms of reports and insights, but the whole process there is, uh, is fully automated um, and it's touchless as well. So if, uh, as an organization, any documents that you look to move towards electronic invoicing from PDFs can be fully automated with zero touch. And one of the reasons that we're seeing such a big take up at the moment is if we go back to 2009, which is when the electronic invoicing was really starting to build, approximately 30% of documents that we were processing at that time were native PDF, native data PDFs. And there is a difference that we'll talk about uh, in PDFs, but what we're looking for is an application generated document, which nearly every sender is going to be sending now as standard. And what we've seen over the last 10 years is a, a significant growth in the um, outputs that are being sent. So nearly everything now is a data PDF. And I think 90% is a very conservative number. I think it's, it's probably closer to 100% to now. Um, but it could be a Word document, it could be a spreadsheet, it could be a CSV file, um, uh, you know, a, a PDF file. Anything that is application generated can be processed through the Capital Cloud Trade Channel. And just to touch very briefly on the different types of PDF, if you scan a document on a scanner and save it as a PDF, that isn't a data PDF, that is what we call an image PDF. But if it's application generated, it actually contains the data layer that can be extracted off of it. And uh, as an example, if you were to identify a PDF and highlight some text and you can copy and paste that, then that is a data PDF and that is what we uh, would process typically. So it's very important that that data layer is there. Uh, it doesn't matter if the data components move around. It doesn't matter um, if, say, something that is normally located on line four suddenly shifts down to line seven or eight. Again, we don't use a, a geographical positioning. This isn't OCR. This is um, digital data that we're dealing with. So we extract the entire document and then start processing it based on your business rules. So some of the, the key benefits that go with um, the PowerTrade e-invoicing solution is that you can split and merge documents. So if you have a sender, uh, a supplier that provides you with multiple invoices on one e email, again, we can pick each of those off. We can also process emails um, that may contain one document that contains multiple invoices within it. The most complicated one that we do over there is a 15,000 page document each month that contains 7,000 invoices within it. And again, we'll extract each of those at line level um, and pass through without any intervention at all. Header and line level uh, data acquisition can be useful. Um, quite often, uh, header level is all that's needed for a finance system, but it might be that you choose to have additional data taken off for, some, for as Carol was talking about, some data insights, which is really starting to drive the transformation around businesses now. And being able to take an unstructured document and put it into a structured format has got quite significant benefits too. It is 100% accurate, um, and I think the key thing here is it transforms uh, a PDF document into the ERP compliant format. So this is a format that Integra can take natively. It'll take it through into, into the ledger and then be able to process from there. It's very simple to implement. So it's, uh, again, the interfacing is all written. Uh, it's a standard component, a standard module within the solution, uh, and it's very quick to adopt as well within the supply community. So very little pushback from suppliers, and typically, again, 90, 95% of senders will, will sort of take up the service, if you like, within a few weeks. So we see some, uh, some very strong sender adoption. Um, I'd say there's no change for them. Um, we're going to do another poll now. And the question that we have that we'd like to ask the group is what is your biggest AP challenge? Is it the length of processing time, the amount of human interaction, exception handling, OCR limitations, managing suppliers and relationships, or volume of invoices high and low? So let me go ahead and get that poll out to you. Okay, and it looks like our top result right now is the amount of human interaction. 
Thank you very much. Thanks, Melanie. Um, and again, I think that's quite typical of the market. Uh, I think the, the the two probably biggest barriers that we normally hear about is the level of human interaction um, and exception handling as well, but also it's sometimes about managing the supply chain as well um, and, and in working with them to actually come up with a, a partnership approach that works well for both sides. So I think in, in terms of looking at uh, some examples of where the service has been adopted, uh, if we first of all just look at um, you know, some of the, sort of the, the volumes, I suppose, as an introduction. So the service is adopted across all sectors, uh, whether it be NHS, uh, local government, central government, private sector. Uh, again, it's a service that can be adopted by anybody that is receiving invoices, which is pretty much everybody. We have over 500 receiving organizations that adopt the service. And the network that we have, which is actually really, really important now, because there's, there's over 13,000 sending organizations on there. So the chances are pretty high that when you start to look at your supply chain, uh, we can actually um, sort of look to maybe have sort of 50, 60, 70, 80 percent already on board. Um, some sectors that we work in, we typically have 90 plus percent of the volumes already going through the network. And again, that feeds back into the high adoption process. We'll talk about a couple of case studies, but just picking back up on, on the poll there, uh, the, we have a significant value of documents that go through, but we have a significant volume of documents that go through as well. And that largely comes back down to the fact that human interaction is the, is the biggest um, blocker, basically, for the success of some of the projects that have been looked at in the past. And a lot of the organizations that you're looking at there on the left-hand side have adopted this to either complement an existing solution or potentially to take in, in its entirety and to actually remove um, the, the facility, if you like, the, the post room, um, and have actually chosen to, to close down any receipts of paper or, or images. So if we just take a, a couple of examples, um, again, there's, uh, Karen will be able to sort of talk through more uh, with you um, in detail if we need to, but I think just to give a couple of generic examples, uh, an NHS trust was using a combination of um, manual processing and OCR and EDI, and again, they were looking to, to streamline that function. There was some quite significant volumes going through the AP team, and what they were looking for was a way to, if you like, embrace the supply chain, to work with their suppliers but to remove some of the processing time um, within the, the AP team. Now, the project there took under three months from start to finish, so initial meeting through to um, processing. It was actually a, a volume that was higher than originally targeted, but we were doing over 7,000 invoices by the third month. Um, and as a result of that, they've actually been able to extend out the, the use of e-invoicing. And again, sometimes replacing some of the older technologies that they had in place but the key thing there is it was reducing down the level of human interaction so there's zero touch by the client's AP team. Some of the challenges that they had was the, as I say, seven days to process an invoice. Uh, sometimes they were looking to maybe take advantage of early settlement payment discounts. Uh, some of the documents were particularly complex. They wanted to be able to pay local suppliers in a faster time frame. Uh, but the process that they had in place didn't really support the, the objectives of the department. And as, a, as an organization, they're processing a significant number of documents manually as well. Um, a lot of these required human intervention. So as a, as a result, uh, what they had was, uh, was continuity for the suppliers. Again, the suppliers were largely already sending in PDF documents as a, as a data PDF. So there was actually no change at all needed. But they were able to move to same-day processing of invoices. and. The time saving was quite significant, so 280 hours saved per month. And again, that enabled them to, to reinvest that resource into more value-add areas so they could look to, to tighten up the whole purchase-to-pay cycle uh, even further. But the, the other benefit isn't just about lowering the cost or the time taken at point of um, data capture. It's actually about the post-capture benefit as well. And this feeds into the whole purchase-to-pay cycle whereby capturing the data accurately and putting the business rules over the top, they were able to eliminate areas such as duplicate carriage charges. Maybe they could look at things that were being ordered off contract, um, the amount of time spent on validating and approving invoices also dropped because there was much greater compliance back to the order. So the whole purchase pay cycle saw some fairly immediate, some fairly significant benefit there as well. 
We'll just look at, uh, at one other example here as well. Um, so this was to do with processing a particularly large invoice, and these invoices weren't uncommon at, at 1,500 pages. So they're receiving these every month. Um, they actually needed to be the data extracted at line level. And whereas it typically took four days to process, we actually managed to reduce that process down to four hours. So as I say, it was a 1,500 page document. Um, it took uh, some quite senior staff to go through and to reconcile the data. It was very important that they actually uh, captured the data accurately. And unfortunately, the previous projects that they'd looked at hadn't, hadn't really sort of met the brief when they'd actually rolled it out as a, as a test. So moving to e-invoicing was a, a natural fit for, for this particular use case. And I'd say 1,500 pages processed without any human intervention at all, 100% accuracy. Uh, it saved 30 hours um, per month uh, for, for these. And again, the time was reinvested in something that added more value to the team and to the organization. So there's a couple of use cases there. Um, hopefully those resonate a little bit with some of the messages. Uh, there's many others that we can talk about, so obviously you know, feel free to, to put some questions through. Uh, as Karen said, uh, please feel free to raise us on the call or, or directly with Karen afterwards, and we'd be more than happy to talk through those. But hopefully that's an introduction to the service and, and way it can complement, hopefully, a current process. Thank you, Jeremy. That was, that was very insightful, and the process, describing that process, I think um, our attendees can see the value of that. Thank you. Um, I just want to spend a little bit of time now doing, um, just kind of summarizing uh, what we've discussed. So I uh, just want to pick up a few things. So in terms of the full roadmap to service automation, um, I, I, you know, our view is that as a partnership, we offer a, a unique approach to clients. You know, this full automation journey from manual processing through, through to full automated e-invoicing you know, this is a foundation, and we see this as a foundation and a continuous journey for clients in terms of automation, for e-invoicing and automation. Um, as Jeremy said, um, it is based on 100% accuracy and zero touch points, and um, that is a unique um, USP um, in the marketplace. And as Jeremy's kind of discussed as well, we have foreseen the barriers around technology, um, legacy systems, around the people side of things and human intervention, and also around the, um, around the process and, and, and the need to streamline that process. I think the, the key outcomes of that is it reduces your oper um, operating costs, and we've seen that um, within our client base. Um, very importantly, we, we kind of, um, have a two-pronged approach to the solution in terms of it increases that visibility of process and data, whilst also increasing the controls and compliance. Generally, some, some organizations and solutions can focus on one element of that, but not the two. And the fact that we do this complementary is, is, is a testament to the solution that we've got. Um, and Based on that approach, um, we would like, we're confident in our solution, we would like to invite you um, to take up a complimentary e-invoicing readiness assessment as a quick health check to help you assess where you are on your automation um, AP journey and potentially help outline um, potential efficiencies and cost savings that you might be able to achieve. So just before we move to the Q&A, um, we'd like to do a final poll question. Melanie, do you want to do this, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, the final poll question, are you considering making improvements to your e-invoicing process and when? Is it in the current year, the next year, or not currently under consideration? Well, let me go ahead and get the poll pushed out. Give it a few more seconds, and it looks like the strongest answer that we have is uh, consideration in the next fiscal year. Thank you very much for participating in that poll. Okay. Uh, all right. Now we are open up for Q and A. If anyone would like to submit a question, please go ahead and put it into the chat 
chat function and we will respond to those questions as they come in. There's one that, that came in during the presentation which I'll pick up on um, and that is how do we know which route uh, an invoice should be sent in from a, a supplier and I think it's, a, it's an interesting question and I think it goes back to which is the right channel for each supplier. I think one of the, the uh, well, one of the big benefits that the Capital Central solution has is that you're not restricted to using just EDI or just e-invoicing or just OCR. I think it is about identifying the most suitable route in for each supplier. So, for example, if you have um, a, a very high volume sender, um, I would suggest that EDI is probably the best route. Uh, and again, that would feed straight through into the purchase ledger. Uh, if you have people that are sending a reasonable high volume of documents, you know, maybe sort of 15, 20 or more a year, or if the document contains some particularly complex data that's maybe a bit tricky to capture manually or, or using OCR, I'd say that's probably most suited to e-invoicing. And then the central solution for capturing images as well, uh, or, or even paper, uh, which is still in existence, uh, is probably best suited to something like the OCR route, the, the optical character recognition. So I think it's, it's one of those ones, and as Karen said, you know, there's a, a free uh, a health check, if you like, an e-invoicing assessment, and I think that would probably work to identify which, which route was the best one in, uh, which way you can get the most value from, uh, and obviously, you know, feel free to you, you ask us the tricky questions during that journey as well. Um, There's another one that's just come through as well, and that is um, how does it feed into the final system? So the I think this relates to, again, e-invoicing, I think if I'm reading the question right, and that is um, so there's a seamless link between the two, and it doesn't matter if somebody is sending something in by EDI or through the Cloud Trade Service. Uh, this is, as I say, it's a core component of Centros, so everything will end up in the accounts payable solution. And from there, it's, it's as if you have entered the data yourself, um, but obviously with 100% accuracy. Uh, and then it'll go through whether it be for um, uh, approval, if it's a non-purchase order uh, invoice, if it's a PO match invoice, maybe it'll be sent through for, for matching, uh, and then feed into the workflow engine to, to, to feed it on from there as well. And I think there's just is this just last one. I think there's a, one more. Uh, this is the, the last one, I think. Um, and that is uh, to do with do the case studies represent typical uh, examples? And uh, yes, they do. They're very much typical examples. Uh, these are real use cases uh, where people have been uh, looking at significant volumes of, of AP, and they've, they've tried other techniques in the past. Maybe they've still got things like OCR in place. They're still manually processing data. And an organization will choose to maybe put a, a toe in the water with a few um, more complex senders, or they may go, Sort of for the full uh, for the full move and move everything to e-invoicing. And I think once we've been able to assess which suppliers that are already on the network, we'll be able to advise exactly how long that that process might take. But typically, between eight to twelve weeks would be a normal time frame from um, starting a project going all the way through to you receiving full uh, documents via e-invoicing. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for answering those questions. Um, I would just like to close by saying thank you very much for attending our Central Sea Invoicing webinar today. Uh, I, hope you, uh, I hope you find it insightful and, um, and there are elements of that, have, that have resonated with you. We'd welcome discussing how we can support you on your AP automation journey, so please just reach out to us. So again, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.